These are the Adidas Sobokovs, absolute beauts. And these are the subject for today's video. I got these like a week or so ago and I thought I'd pay a little homage to them because these are probably my favorite shoes of the year. So I created this little piece of art, piece of art, what a twat, what kind of twat says that? I just thought it looked nice. So I thought I'd snap a little picture, cut it out, stick it on Photoshop and then use this as the subject for my latest tutorial, which is the biggest mistake that Photoshop users make. I did touch on this on my last Photoshop video, which was five beginner tips, but I feel this one needs a bit more of a going over because this for me was like the big one that when I worked how to do this properly, it saved me so much hassle. Non-destructive editing is the way forward. This eraser, see this eraser here? He's not your friend, right? Leave him alone. He, he ain't doing you no favors, okay? The, 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 as soon as you start deleting stuff, that stuff's gone forever, okay? It's just so much easier and just more straightforward and more user-friendly to use a mask instead of deleting stuff. So this is the shot I took yesterday in the back garden. Nifty 50, Canon lens, 70D that I'm, oh my God, I almost dropped that. 70D that I'm shooting on at the moment. What, 550 for the two, and you can get a pretty good image with nice depth of field, which always looks snazzy. Why did, I can't believe I said snazzy. Who says snazzy anymore? So me, three years ago, would have approached this with the eraser tool and been like, oh, I'm just gonna, just gonna cut this out, go on, just get, get, get rid of all the pixels. Oh, whoops, I've gone over a bit, undo. It's just not the way to do it. Just don't do it, just don't do it. The way to go about cutting something out is to make a profile around it. I'm just gonna do a rough one for the purpose of this. And once you've got that, you have the layer selected. Make sure the layers are smart objects because you wanna be saving this image. You don't wanna be damaging this image. Then right click, make selection, keep that at zero. I'll explain why later. And then click down here at the make clipping mask. Now you see this little box down here that has the black and the white. Now if I hold Alt and click on that, it shows this. Now obviously everything that's in black isn't there. It's been deleted, deleted, hidden, should I say. Stop calling it deleted, call it hidden. And everything is white, is visible. So if I click away, you can see how that works. And obviously if I Alt click that again, get the paintbrush out, toggle it to black and white. And then if I was to paint into that, and then click away, you can see it's removed that from the image. Now, just to prove that this is hidden and not deleted, if I untick this little chain here, I can then move the background independently from the mask, okay? You can see I've got that layer selected. If I was then to select the mask, I could move the mask independently from the background. It took me a while to wrap my head around how this worked, but I, I, I think this is quite a good way of explaining it. So this is one I did earlier, it took me about 10 minutes, went around it with a pen tool, masked it, kept the feather radius at zero. Now, the reason I kept it at zero is because if you've got a hard edge, it's much easier to add a softer edge. So for example, if on here I hold command and click, it will select this outline, it will select this profile. So for this example, what I can do is right click feather, and then select a feather radius, say I select one of 30, I'll go massively overboard. Then I select the profile, right click, select inverse. So then if I whack the paintbrush out and just paint along here, you see it just paints that feather. Now obviously that's not what I wanted, that looks ridiculous, but you might wanna do one or two pixels feather, depending on what the artwork is, just to give it a less harsh and a bit more of a natural edge to it. So that's pretty much the tutorial done. So I've dragged the shoe into an artboard here. If you double click on that, because I made it a smart object, you can see I've got the originals all saved here. I did a bit of messing around with the layers. You can also do gradient maps, which you know sometimes look cool, looks a bit weird on that one. So now I'll just show you all the other steps I took to get to the final bit. I'll start though with the shadow. Now I'm not gonna teach you how to do shadows today because I'm not the best at shadows and that's a tutorial in itself. And if you wanna know, then let me know in the comments below. But as you can see, I've added a bit of shadow in. Uh, when I put a solid background on, you can see it makes a world of difference. It just gives it that, it just makes look like it's actually there. So we've got the pink background, that's obviously from the soul, the pink and blue theme that I wanted to go with. The Sobakov, Sobakov logo. Again, this is a smart object. So if I double click on that, you can see I've just used a font, just typed it out adjusted the spacing, added a rectangle in the middle because again, that's what the logo looks like on the shoe. 
and just masked out the bits that I didn't want. If I disable the mask, you can see how the full rectangle, it's just easier to do it like that. It just, you don't have to be lining stuff up. You know it's a straight rectangle, so you, you can just use a mask. So then what I also added was an outline version of Sobokov across the back, just because I felt it just felt a bit empty without it. it. Gives a bit of texture to the background without being kind of too overwhelming. There's my little logo in the bottom corner. And then what I also did was added the outline Sobokov just over the top, just to give it a bit of depth. I don't know, I thought it looked cool. And last but by no means least is the Adidas tree fall in the corner. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks nice. Um, just for a bit of work, it took me like, I'd say two hours to do everything, photographing it, cutting it all out, getting everything all sorted out. And yeah, there you have it. I want to give a quick shout out to the Designers League Facebook group I'm part of. It's a great place to just, if you've got some stuff you've been working on, you just want to share it and just get some quick feedback from a variety of different people, uh, stick it on there. I'll put a link in the description to the Facebook group. If you're a designer, just starting off, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend you get on there because it's a very constructive community as well. So if you found this video helpful, please, please, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, turn that notification bell thing on because now we all have to say that on YouTube because YouTube doesn't like sharing our videos to people who actually subscribe to us, I think, just from what I've read. I'm gonna try and bring a video every Wednesday. I've been pretty good so far. This is the fourth Wednesday in a row I've brought a video. Happy days. I've been Tomo, this is the Tom McCluskey YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Ta-da.